Maybe it's my environment and my tendency to push the status quo, but I can't help but notice those whom achieve more than the average comes down to setting goals, setting targets, and pushing for continual progression. Content, but never satisfied. You may be thinking I'm just talking about training and fitness, but really setting goals is an integral component to general life. Nicole and I continue to ensure we are focusing and inputting time into our relationship and as a family unit. If the goals you are gunning down aren't matched with the same amount of effort towards your loved ones, how can you expect to grow together and experience the appropriate balance between family, work, health and fitness? I focus on my health and performance that I can live better and have more energy to be with them. I don't live to be healthier and fitter. The goal is to do things in a way that you can spend more time effortlessly with your true loved ones. Having better health and performance is a sure way to enhance this time. So we are down at Featherdale Wildlife Park. It's Hamish's birthday today. So he's the big two. So we're gonna spend most of the morning here, pretty much the day here. And then uh, we'll see whatever else comes for Hamish's birthday. So Nicole's already out of the reptile zone. <laughs> Don't you like this zone, Nick? Come back in here. <laughs> Having a good day? Oh yeah. How exciting are the koalas? <laughs> they move so quickly. Happy birthday, <laughs> So that does bring our little trip to Featherdale Wildlife Park here to an end. Seen some awesome animals to be honest. I didn't actually realize that this place was this big. But uh, otherwise, Hamish has had an absolute ball. Buddy, two years of age. I can't believe that it's been two years since uh, Mummy has popped you out and you have come into our world. Lots of things have changed since you've been uh, born, buddy. Love you, mate. You're the best. Thanks for being my best mate. Can't wait to all the trips that we have. Okay, here we go again. Monday. 38 minutes into a 60 minute climb, 750 meters of elevation gain, followed by 15 minutes of LHR surges. Oh, Monday. All right, good morning. It is 6.30 a.m. on a Tuesday morning. I've already been going for about 45 minutes now. So what I'm doing at the moment is 10 minutes of incline work at 15 incline and five to six speed at LAHR. And then the secondary 10 minutes, I'm running at 11 and a half K to 12 K an hour. Also within that LAHR zone. LAHR zone, lower aerobic heart rate, if you don't know what that is. Not math training. Okie dokie, so just headed out for a lunchtime run. Hamish is asleep at the moment, so just trying to fit that one in. I'm gonna do about 75 minutes to 90 minutes of LAHR stuff with Maggie. Uh, we're just gonna run along the actual road itself to stay on that uh, public public road so that Maggie Dags can come and join along just for today. And we'll see how we go along. Anyway, tune in, here we go. Okie dokie, so it's Thursday here. It's almost 11 o'clock. Time for me to get out on the trails. I'm just up at Katoomba at the moment. Gonna do three to four hours, a bit of stair work. Uh, gonna go down Nellie's Glen initially, and then turn around, and come back up, and then I'll probably head my way to the giant staircase, something like that. Anyway, I've got, yeah, three, maybe four hours until I gotta get back into it, but otherwise I'll jump out there now, get some steps underneath the legs because there's no steps around our area, uh, quite like the Blue Mountains. Anyway, jump in, woohoo! Tell you what, it's so nice to be being able to train 
fat fueled. I'm not actually carrying anything on me today. So again, three to four hours. And even I've actually just brought like 500 mils of water and I just brought my soya water filter along for the trip. So if I need to fill up, I'll just fill up along the, uh, I'll find a creek and find a water source and then be on my merry way. <laughs> Self fueled run. And now I'm getting to the point where I'm just carrying a small bit of water on me. This is cool. Alright, so just made it down to uh, my turnaround point, which is 7.5k from Nelly's Glen. Just down here at the moment at this crossing. So this little part just here is not actually part of the ETA, but I thought it would be nice to stop, take a breather, soak up the beautiful views. Otherwise now it's time for me to turn back around and I go up to up Nelly's Glen and then we'll see what I want to do when I get up there. Oh, that's feeling good, just taking time. It's a nice easy long run today. Okay, so that's Nelly's Glen done. Sweaty, sweaty, sweaty. Uh, I got to climb. Was running all the way up to the main uh, crossover for the all the running water, which you'll see now. I just had to fill up my water bottle. Otherwise, sweat is in the eyes, so my apologies. Up the top, head back past the car, and we'll see if I take a bit of a look at that scenic world and um, uh, Echo Point. Okay, that is my run done. Three hours, easy. The terrain was relatively hard, but perceived effort was easy. I was just kind of heading out for a bit of shits and gigs to get some kilometers under the legs. Otherwise, 25K done, dusted, down Nelly's Glen, up, back across the scenic world, and then back to the car. Didn't manage to have time to go down to uh, the giant staircase, unfortunately, but got to Echo Point. Had a cheeky geese at the Three Sisters. It's always a lovely view. Otherwise, I gotta get back to the car. Calls up this afternoon, and we have two new clients starting next week, which is very exciting. Endurance specific, one triathlon and one half marathon training. And both actually need to drop a bit of weight as well, which is what we do. That's who we help. Ah, love my job. All right, here we go. Let's get back to it. So it's Friday just after my long run yesterday, or three hour run. Today is 60 minutes in the pool, which I am now done. 3.3K, nice and easy perceived effort, recovery swim. Tomorrow is road run. Uh, we're going out for lunch or out to lunch with some, some family. So we are going to run there, which will be about a half marathon, somewhere around there. Anyway, we're feeling good. I'm covered. 3.3k soon, no. So it's funny when we, like we coach for people all over Australia, particularly when we're talking about uh, endurance events like triathlons and uh, ultra running, even just marathons as well. It's uh, one of the biggest flaws that I see that people do is it because it's an endurance, an endurance sport or we're talking about doing something for a long period of time, people get caught up in, in the endurance sessions, in the very, very long sessions. And I, I mean, I, my, I myself as well have been a, a massive offender of this as well. But if you're, if you're looking at doing an event or you're looking at you know, trying to better your marathon, uh, take, a bigger, take a bigger focus. When we're talking about performance and uh, you know, whether it's aerobic conditioning or whether it's getting some speed under your legs or strength under your legs, it's actually the little sessions that you end up compounding up over time that really allow you to move forward as opposed to the big sessions that kind of stand out mentally and I guess physically to some degree as well. Because they're those sessions, the big sessions are fun. You know, you're probably out and about. Uh, you've, you've made a day of it. 
if you're talking about ultra running or you're talking about triathlons, like we're, you know, a long, a long run or a long ride is it easily above three to six to nine hours, depending on where you're at within your program. But unfortunately, those sessions are, are purely just a bit of a test run or a mental run as opposed to physical enhancement or physical performance improvements. It's the little sessions that you do, say, Monday to Friday, that's where you get majority of your benefits from. You stress yourself just in a, in a micro sense, just that little bit, so that your body actually has a chance to recover, adapt from it, and you don't necessarily get completely overwhelmed physically, and your body has a tough time trying to, to recover from these big, audacious kind of sessions. And I, I mean, I'm, I myself get caught up in that as well because I know that I can do these really, really long runs. I tend to want to do them and want to book them in, but realistically, it just breaks my body down. Not only time-wise, it, you know, it's really hard to fit into your life. So if you're, if you're doing an event, or you're, let's say when the events are back on and you're starting to train for an event, my uh, little tip for you in this video would be to focus on the small sessions. Focus on the little things that you do at a time. You know, whether that's if you're in a strength phase, okay, focus on just a small strength session to start with rather than this big audacious strength session where you're lifting a stack of weight and then you're sore for a whole week. Same thing with your running, either you're just starting or you know, you're as far down the rabbit hole as I am. It's a good reminder to know that the sessions that you do throughout the week, that's where you build your fitness. And I talk about, uh, you're right? Talk about training intensity, discipline, and by only working out for half an hour, 45 minutes or 60 minutes throughout the week, it, it really ensures that you are specific with that amount of time that you have because it's only a short amount of time. You want to make sure that what you're doing is actually going to allow you, you know, to, to get some sort of benefit out of it. So it's Tuesday here at the moment. I'm just on for my second run. I got up early this morning and did one this morning at the gym. Uh, both today are 75 minutes long, all LHR work, and then a couple of little surges towards the end of it. Maggie's gonna come with me. I'm just heading out from home at the moment. But otherwise, it's cracking on. Tomorrow is swim. Thursday, I'll back it to Katoomba, I hope, if I have time, to try and do some stair work. Friday, back to the swim again, and then we'll see what sort of rest and recovery that I need after that. It's all about the small stuff. Accumulation, accumulating all over periods of time. If you haven't heard about the compounding effect, I'll put a link in this one here. You have a bit of a re-compounding effect, the best way to think about your training. All right, Mags, you ready to go? Ready to go? Come on, baby. I don't know about you, but when I feel bogged down from life, work, and just everything in general, setting a goal like running a marathon or losing weight is not likely to happen. I guess you could say that achievements, progression, and ticking off goals has a compounding effect. One goal leads to another, one confidence boost leads to another, and so on and so forth. You need to take control and action of that moment you get a glimpse of motivation. Motivation won't last, and this desire will soon fly away you need to take hold of this small moment in time and set something that you have confidence in completing. Just a small level of confidence is necessary to be setting a goal. So if you're bogged down, low self-esteem, shooting for something that is audacious is probably not the best idea. So set something that is a piece of cake, an overly achievable goal, a ticker box goal. Anyone looking to improve health, improve physical performance at any level would have started with just ticking off small boxes. A micro step, the easy and doable tasks that accumulate over time become something so much bigger. Do this for long enough and you will soon realize the insignificant sessions become your most powerful tool to improved fitness. You want to think and perceive any exercise or training session as a negative to the body. It's when you rest and you recover that you actually start to see the benefits you're after. So by only relying on the long form sessions to create better endurance, 
you're applying the wrong dosage to your training volume, meaning there is no favorable response to your adaptations. If you will, it's the incorrect hormetic zone. Prioritize the small things. Prioritize the smaller sessions. Prioritize the Monday to Friday sessions. And if you can't always fit them into your week, I would look at changing your plans for the weekend. The body will adapt if you treat it right. By throwing a bunch of modalities and long form sessions at your body, this is a great way to plateau or worse, get injured. One step, two step and three step. No jumps. Do the groundwork.